So Iowa elected to receive the opening kickoff from Jordan Stout. It was a very strong leg. Amir Smith Marset, leading kickoff return man in the Big Ten a year ago, back deep with the breeze at his back. It's a touchback for Jordan Stout. So here comes Nate Stanley. Veteran quarterback from Menominee, Wisconsin. He told us that's about an hour from the Twin Cities. 21 and 10 as a starting quarterback. 60 career touchdown passes behind only Chuck Long and Drew Tate. As a matter of fact, with one tonight, he'll tie Drew Tate for second place. Long through 74. Very good student in health and human physiology with a minor in psychology, which undoubtedly helps when you're the quarterback. Running back by committee for both teams. This is Makai Sargent getting the first carry for Iowa. And it's a yard. And here's tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. I think for Iowa, there's a couple guys. Tyler Goodson's their freshman running back. He's in a rotation, but he's very good in the backfield and as a receiver. And then Amir smith Marset is kind of a dynamic receiver on the outside. A couple linebackers in the back of that defensive line. Micah Parsons and Cam Brown both good against the run and also used a lot in the pass rush. Second and nine. Sergeant again. We spoke with Nate Stanley yesterday, Todd. He said he thought they had their best week of practice off the uncharacteristically shaky performance of Michigan. Not only the eight sacks allowed, but they had eight penalties. They committed four turnovers. They went up to Ann Arbor having had just one turnover for the entire season in their first four games. Yeah, first three interceptions of the season for Nate Stanley. He just has to be smart with the ball, and that clock in his head has to be ticking a little bit faster against this pass rush of Penn State. Penn State averaging five sacks per game, number one in the country. Stanley's throw incomplete to the far sideline for Nico Regani and the safety Lamont Wade had coverage for the Nittany Lions. Good protection by the offensive line, but better coverage downfield by Penn State. Nowhere to go with the football for Nate Stanley. So a three and out for Iowa. Here's Michael Sleep Dalton, a 27-year-old Australian who has transferred here from Arizona State. Jahan Dotson and KJ Hamler back deep. Sleep Dalton. He took too long. He did, and it looked like it might have been deflected by Shaka Tony. And the ball flutters out of bounds along the near sideline. Well, Sleep Dalton almost ran into Shaka Tony. I mean, I wasn't sure if he was thinking he was going to fake this and run it or what, but he held it so long that he almost ran right into Shaka Tony, and Tony did a good job. Could have probably just gone for the football. Yeah, I don't think play. he deflected it, but he certainly threw off the punt. Yeah. As you said, Sleep Dalton kind of went to sleep himself. They'll mark it at the 41-yard line. Just an 11-yard punt. So a tough start for Iowa. And in front of a home crowd that wants to be fully engaged, they blitz on first down, and Sean Clifford's pass is incomplete. Thrown behind the running back, Journey Brown. Terrific start to his first season as the starting quarterback after three years from Trace McSorley. Clifford is picked up right where Trace McSorley yeah. left off. Very fiery guy, very confident guy. The team really believes in him, and they feed off of his energy even though this is his first year as a starter. Averaging 288 yards per game passing, number one in the Big Ten. He's also rushed for 200 yards this season. He's in trouble, and he goes down. Back near midfield, Brady Reef and Cedric Lattimore combined on the sack. Well, on second down, now you're going to see zone coverage back here. All right, they're not blitzing. They blitzed on first down. This is a four-man rush. And Clifford had nowhere to go with the football, but they did a good job of not allowing him to get outside of the pocket on the scramble and ultimately get the sack on second down. Well, we talked about the Penn State defense, but Iowa is third in the country in scoring defense, giving up just 8.8 .8 points per game. They rush four, push the pocket back, and Clifford goes down again. This time in the arms of Chauncey Golston. Well, this is a great start for the defense. Here's Golson. He normally is outside on an end. They bring him inside, and he's going to whip the guard. 
Tough inside move right over the center, actually, Manette. And they get two sacks in a row. Last week, Sean, against Michigan, they fumbled on their first offensive play. The defense came in and held them to a field goal, this time even better after the short punt. So Blake Gillikin will punt. Senior, one of their 18 captains, Nico Regani, is the return man. End over end punt. It's a poor bounce for the Nittany Lions, and they down it near the 17-yard line. James Franklin and Kirk Ferentz, the head coaches. James Franklin looking for his first win at Penn State against an AP Top 25 team on the road. They are 0-6 on the road against ranked teams under James Franklin. Yeah, you know, they're, they're taking little climbs each year. You know, they've been getting in the top 10. Now they're trying to find a way to get into that college football playoff. And, Beating a ranked team on the road is certainly a big thing to do. Both of these teams ranked during their meeting for the second year in a row. But Kai Sargent, they just cannot get the running game going. But they have he was to. knocked back after a one-yard game. They have to run. They cannot, you know, think that they can't run. As good as Penn State has been in rushing the passer, they've been equally good stopping the run. Coming in, only 1.5 yard per carry they're allowing. But... You have to keep the defense honest. You got to find ways to create some running plays some way, somehow. Tyler Goodson, the running back now, true freshman, stays in the block. Stanley in the flat to Nico Regani, out of bounds, still about five yards short of first down. Chased out by John Reed, an outstanding fifth year senior at cornerback. You know, it's so interesting. For so many years, we always talked about the SEC teams as being the teams, the best defenses and the best defensive stats and scoring defense, total defense. Now, when you look at it through the first month and a half of the season, it's the Big Ten. Ohio State, Wisconsin, Penn State, and, and Iowa, four of the best defenses in all of college football. Penn State has not given up a point in the first quarter this year. They're the only FBS team in the country that hasn't given up points in the first quarter. Regani, good catch in traffic, and then a tough run after the catch for the red shirt freshman out of East Haven, Connecticut, for the first first down of the night. Well, nice job by Regani. Watch him protect the football. After he makes the catch, he knows they're going to come and try to knock it out, and he protects it with both hands at the same time fighting for the first down. A nice conversion. Back to the run they go with Tyler Goodson, freshman out of Sewanee, Georgia. He was the Georgia High School Player of the Year last year. Coming into the game, 14 receptions. That's more than any other running back in the Big Ten. He's been very effective lining up as a wide receiver, as a slot, and also running the football. Second and nine in the third. They like to throw the ball to the running backs. That's been a staple of their offense throughout the years under Kirk Ferentz. Now it is... 21st season here at Iowa as the head coach. Also spent time as an assistant to Aiden Fry. Stanley on the run and on target. Brandon Stone belted out of bounds just shy of the first down by Cam Brown, outside linebacker. Nice decision by offensive coordinator Brian Ferentz to move the pocket now. Move the launch point for the quarterback Stanley. Get away from that rush. And a nice route. He got separation, as did Brandon Smith. Separation with our camera as well after we ran into it. There's Makai Sargent. And is he going to have the first down? It's very close. They're lining up like they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Now they'll also use snap count. They're going for it, and it's Stanley, a big guy at 6'4", and about 243 pounds with some help with the push from behind. He has another first down for Iowa. I don't know why you wouldn't always do this. If you have a big quarterback and you're allowed to push from behind now, go ahead and do that. Let him lower his head and just get behind him and push him through that mark, whether you're on the out in the field or on the goal line. Nice change of downs here. And I, this is a good opportunity now maybe for Nate Stanley to go play action and take a shot at a play down the field. This is a full media timeout. Bittman. On first and ten for Iowa, after a hot guy timeout, Stanley on the move. Low throw and a catch made, no. Waved off or incomplete. Good effort by Brandon Smith to try to rescue that low throw. Second time they moved the pocket, buying a little time for Stanley. He's got an open receiver. 
You see how his body was drifting to the right as he threw the football? Just didn't get enough on that. You want to try to get your shoulders turned towards the line of scrimmage the best you can. Just not able to get enough on that football. Three interceptions against Michigan last week for Stanley. Those were his first three of the season. He'd gone 139 straight passes without one. Back to last year when he led them to a 9 and 4 season and a win over Mississippi State in the Outback Bowl. There's a hole from Akai Sargent. Brian Ferentz talked. We talked with him yesterday. Was critical himself. He said, "I need to take the blame more than anybody else for what happened." He thought he was not patient enough with the run. Clearly, they're making an effort to get the run established here. At that time, they went with a different personnel group: 13 personnel, one back, three tight ends. They've not shown that at all other than on the goal line they did it on second down on that play. Brian Ferentz played for his dad Kirk. He's an outstanding lineman had a opportunity with the Falcons and Saints but said he got cut by the Saints and when Sean Payton said would you be interested in coaching that's when he knew his playing days were over. Pass over the middle incomplete and one of the officials hits the deck as well it was intended for Tyler Goodson and the umpire Jeff Carr. Good to see him bounce back up quickly. That was a good throw. I think Goodson got a little, uh, a little uh, frightened here on the inside. Whether it was the official that that got to him or the idea of Cam Brown coming across his face, whatever it was, not able to make the catch, and that would have been a conversion. Unfortunately, hopefully, the umpire not hurt either. So here's Michael Sleep Dalton. Not going to waste any time this time. Fair catch made by KJ Hamler. On and off the field. What a job Matt Rule has done. Recently given a contract extension. Trouble with the snap. Clifford just throws it away. Over the head of the safety, Jack Kerner of Iowa. He was the nearest player to it. So a very rough start. For this offensive line trying to protect Clifford, and that looked like Clifford's fault. Yeah, he, he took his eyes off the football. It was a little bit high on his shoulder, but his eyes were looking to the receiver, and he took him away from the football, and he wasn't able to clean the catch. Did well to pick it up and throw it away. Second down and 10. Ricky Slade, part of their running back by committee. Gets a yard, it'll be third down and nine, and here's the Chick-fil-A impact players on this side of the ball. Well, Noah Kane is one of a four-man running back rotation. I think he's the best one they've got right now. Pat Fryermuth, their tight end, a big target, very dependable receiver. A.J. Vanessa and Geno Stone, the two leaders of this Iowa defense that's playing outstanding so far tonight. Vanessa led the Big Ten in sacks last year, ten and a half. He's off to a slow start this year. A lot of double teams and chips, and that's a drop pass. K.J. Hamler, I've been trying to turn and get the yardage necessary for the first down. I think he knew when the ball was arriving, he was well short of the marker. He was well short, and Iowa had two defenders over there ready to kind of corral him on the line of, on the sidelines. And that's good, solid defense against Hamler. Minus seven yards of offense for Penn State. Two possessions here. Blake Gilligan now for the Nittany Lions. Good punt. And a fair catch by Nico Regani. Welcome back to Iowa City. We have had a wonderful reminder tonight of the power of game day for good. You might remember this sign that Carson King put up asking for beer money for his Venmo. He started getting donations pouring in. He decided to donate that money to the Iowa Children's Hospital. And today, Three million dollars has been donated to the Children's Hospital. He is honored here at the game, and he is an Iowa State fan. It's the only time I think an Iowa State fan has been honored and cheered here at this crowd. Three million dollars for good. That's well, a great story. As we saw, he was saluted by the crowd here during the previous commercial break. And there is the Children's Hospital. Right outside the stadium, beautiful full moon over the hospital tonight. The children watching from the top floor. It's a tradition that started here in 2017 at the end of the quarter. The fans here wave to the patients and their families, and they wave back. A lot of cool traditions in college football. That might be the best. Quick throw, Amir Smith-Marset. Chased out of bounds, but it's a first down. John Reed chased him out at the 50. Two quick throws in a row to Smith-Marset. He's one of our impact players. He's a dynamic guy. 
Very athletic guy, big frame. Good to get him involved in your offense here in the first quarter. And quick throws. There's Torin Young. One of the four running backs they've been using. He's been the most productive. He's been their leading rusher the last two games, but only at 40 yards rushing as they struggled to move the ball on the ground last week against Michigan. Really good play by Garrett Taylor, the safety for Penn State. It was pretty well blocked up front, but he was the unblocked defender coming from his safety position and a solid tackle on the sideline. Tyler Goodson, the running back now. No score, more than midway through the first quarter. Stanley, a confident strike to Nico Regani in a first down to the 33-yard line of Penn State, a pickup of 18. See, the play action is going to hold this linebacker. He's going out, but watch the play action. Fake is going to hold number 40 right into Lucetta, and that opens up a window to throw the football. Get to the line quickly, but Penn State's ready. They stop the freshman Goodson after a pickup of two. Antonio Shelton in the middle of that defensive front made the stop for Penn State. I think it's very important for Iowa with field position to not only come away with points, but to come away with a touchdown. When they played last year, they scored 24 points. They lost 30 to 24, but their offense did not score a touchdown. And they were in good field position several times during the ball game. They scored four points in Happy Valley last year on safeties. Scored a touchdown on a fake field goal. Penn State crowding the line. It's Torin Young trying to get outside, and he will not. Wrapped up by Ellis Brooks, a backup linebacker, redshirt sophomore from Virginia. Well, he threatened blitz. He's right here. He's threatening blitz. He just makes a nice run to the football. Good read. Runs right over the center, Tyler Linderbaum, and gets to the back. And this is a, a defense that attacks the line of scrimmage. That's why they have so many tackles for loss, so many sacks. Their whole philosophy, their whole style, is to push the line of scrimmage backwards. Iowa without their starting right guard tonight, Cole Banward out with a knee injury. It's a screen. Makai Sargent has blockers, has another first down. Inside the 20, John Reed made the tackle. When you run a screen and it's man coverage, you have to block the man defender. That's him, Cam Brown. Watch him peel back and get blocked by the center, Linderbaum, and that's all it takes. When you run a screen, if it's man coverage, you just have to get a piece of the guy responsible for the back, and Linderbaum did a great job on that one. The new right guard is number 71, Mark Kallenbarger, making his first career start, redshirt sophomore. Protecting for Stanley. Regani in trouble and chopped down behind the line of scrimmage. Great response to the ball by Trent Gordon, a redshirt freshman out of Spring, Texas. A lot of quick throws, trying to get the ball out of Stanley's hand and some good open field tackling we're seeing from Penn State from their secondary personnel. Penn State plays a lot of guys. They rotate a lot of guys, particularly in the back end of their defense. We haven't given up a point all year in the first quarter, but Iowa is threatening. They're in field goal range at the very least. Running out of time, Stanley, and he'll go down. Back at the 30-yard line, Shaka Tony, the first man there. This was supposed to be a quick throw. How do you know that? Watch the linemen go for cut blocks. Whenever they go for cut blocks, that means they're expecting the quarterback to get rid of the football quickly. He doesn't. He pulls it back down, and that leads to the sack. And that's a case where Nate Stanley, rather than take that play, throw the football away. Say the defense won that play, and give yourself a chance on third down. Uh, Brent Pry, he's the defensive coordinator for Penn State. Now they're on the fringe of field goal range for Keith Duncan. On third down and 20, another quick throw. Brandon Smith, gang tackle by three Nittany Lions. John Reed there again. Jaquan Brisker and Lamont Wade all. Dropping stone for a gain of one. They'll try a long field goal. Yeah, really good job by John Reed. Watch him just break down 
and not let the receiver get away. He knows he's got help coming from the inside, and John Reed does a nice job of stopping that for a very short game. So here is Keith Duncan. 11 out of 12 in field goals this year. And that one looked good all the way. So Penn State has now given up points in the first quarter. They were the last team to not yield a point in the first quarter coming into tonight. Penn State defense, by the way, John Reed with four tackles already. Responding to those quick throws to the perimeter by Nate Stanley. Well, here's Caleb Shudak to kick off. He is the kickoff specialist. Thinking for Iowa, his dad kicked at Iowa State. Jeff is an all-big kicker for the Cyclone. Short kickoff, here's K.J. Hamler just jammed on the brakes and got steamrolled at the 20-yard line. Two, three and outs, couple of sacks, minus seven yards of offense for a Penn State team that averages 500 yards per game. Noah Kane, an eight-yard gain on first down. Holly? Well, Todd, you're talking about the lift of that Iowa defense, and they have two starters back tonight that's really providing some energy. We already saw Brady Reef get some pressure on the quarterback from that tackle position. He's back after missing three games, and Matt Hankins is back at corner, adding a big lift. Absolutely. And the handoff goes to Kane. See, this is the guy. They've got four tailbacks, but what I've seen on film is when they really need to get something going, this is the guy that gets it going for him running it. Last week against Purdue, they scored 28 points right away. Then they went into a little bit of a lull, and they didn't score their last touchdown to the fourth quarter until they put him in the ball game. He ended up with 105 yards, and he was the difference in the fourth quarter. It was his first career 100-yard game. It certainly won't be his last. He weaves through the middle to the 39-yard line for five yards on first down. Confident young man when he was 10 years old, Growing up in Texas at the time, he told his mother, you need to find me a more competitive league. <laughs> I'm, uh, I need better competition. And she did. Found yeah. a different youth football league to play in. Went to IMG Academy in Florida. I don't know if that was a mistake. It sure looked like it. Clifford dropped for a loss. Well, three on that play. Austin Schulte leading the way for Iowa. Yeah, this looks like a mix-up between Clifford and Noah Kane, not quite sure what was happening. There was a blitz inside, and Jaimon Colbert really kind of disrupted the timing, blitzing from his linebacker position. Schulte with the, the tackle, but that looked like a mistake by either the quarterback or the running back. Final seconds of the first quarter. Clifford had time that time, and his throw is incomplete. Attended again for K.J. Hamler, it's Geno Stone in coverage, Pennsylvania native, grew up a Penn State fan, was recruited for a while by Penn State, really wanted to go there. They backed away late. He wound up here in Iowa. Uh, he said, I don't really harbor much resentment, but my mother does. <laughs> and his mom, Aaron Stone, is here tonight. We well, did have a pick six in the game last year at State College, and I'm sure he had fun doing that. Here's Blake Gilligan, rugby-style punt. And another fair catch by Nico Regaining. Well, there is Aaron Stone, Geno Stone's mom. She makes the 10-hour drive regularly to come to the home games here in Iowa City. We were told by Gino yesterday in our visit that they went to several Penn State home games while he's been yeah. recruited. He was at the game there against Ohio State when Penn State had the big win. And that kind of turned out to be a bad thing for Gino because yeah. Coach Franklin right. said before the game, we look forward to offering you a scholarship in the not too distant future. Then when they had that big win, all of a sudden a lot of top recruits around the country said, hey, maybe I'll go to yeah. Penn State. They just knocked off Ohio State. All of a sudden, they didn't have a scholarship for Geno Stone, he was going to go to Kent State until Iowa jumped in late. He only came to visit Iowa because his mother said, you're getting in the car, we're going to go take a look at it. He's glad he did. Sergeant, a short run on the final play of the first quarter. Here in Iowa City, 
moments to go during the break after the first quarter the tradition that started after the University of Iowa State Family Children's Hospital was constructed in 2017 the sellout crowd here 69,000 waving to the patients and their families top floor the 12th floor one of the highest spots in Iowa City obviously great vantage point to look down at Kinnick Stadium Nate Stanley out and throwing and on target for about a seven yard gain and uh, Todd I know those patients and their families up there enjoying what they've seen yeah. so far this will be a test I guess of bedtime tonight <laughs> we're close to 725 in the evening here some of them might step a little extra late tonight to enjoy the game. It's one of those traditions that kind of gives you a lump in your throat yeah. every time you see it. Puts things into perspective, that's for sure. Now watch, they like, when they have him isolated on the single side, they look to throw the football to him, Brandon Jones. And they blitz off that corner. They throw it to the near side for Makai Sargent. Cam Brown in coverage, the linebacker. The Iowa sideline wanted a flag. They're not going to get it. This is really good work by Cam Brown because he almost got picked off by Brandon Jones, but you see the closing speed. He's able to get there. There is no such thing as face guarding in college football. He doesn't have to turn and find the football. He made a play with his hand, and that was just excellent athleticism and length by Cam Brown to get there to make that play. Stanley had completed seven in a row before that incompletion. Here's Michael Sleep Dalton, a bomb. Backpedaling Hamlet to the 20. Iowa was there. Hamlet shows his elusiveness, and then he slipped down at the 25-yard line. 53-yard punt, five-yard return. There is a flag near where Hamler went down. John O'Neill is the referee. During the return. Holding number 37 on the return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Timeout. To Hartlob called for the penalty. There's a look at the pictures from the Xfinity Skycam. You can check out our alternate angle Xfinity Skycam coverage. Tonight's game streaming live on the ESPN app. Glad Xfinity Skycam was able to fly tonight when it was quite gusty. Here at the stadium in the early afternoon, there was some question that might be too windy, but the winds have died down. Very comfortable evening here. Sean Clifford over the middle, incomplete. Trying to get it to the big tight end, Pat Fryermuth, sophomore from Merrimack, Massachusetts. Now watch the two linebackers, 34 Christian Welch, 49 Nick Neiman, converge on the football and knock it out. This is an aggressive Iowa defense so far that's playing very sound. That's what they do. They don't try to trick you much. They line up in the right place. They tackle very well. That's Devin Ford getting a carry. Ford another true freshman here. running back. And Jack Kerner made the tackle safety for Iowa. And they're a different kind of defense in Penn State. They're more of a control the line of scrimmage with their front rather than attack or try to push the line of scrimmage. But they do rush the passer well. And they benefited. Holly mentioned Matt Hankins, a DB back from injury. Riley Boss as well. So they can play with extra defensive back packages. They really couldn't do that the last couple of weeks. They didn't have the bodies. And the catch made. Yeah, that's the first third down conversion of the night now for Penn State as KJ Hamler picks it up. Yeah, he's in the slot. Hard to press him when he's in the slot, and he does a nice job of knowing what he needed for the first down, getting past that marker, and then protecting the football. Clifford running out of time, lobs it up in the direction of Firemood, who cannot make the diving catch. We talked to Ricky Ronnie, the offensive coordinator, yesterday about this Iowa defense. And he says, you know, they, they're very sound. They don't do a lot, but what they do, they do really well. One of the things they do is they try to have 22 eyes on the football all the time, and that allows them to play fast downhill and tackle. Devin Ford down short of the first down. Devin Christian Ford Welch, the linebacker. In on the stop on Ford, Stafford, Virginia. 
He got off to a great start. There's an Indy Lion in his first career game, the opener against Idaho when they won 79 to 7. He ran for over 100 yards at 107. Third down and four. Penn State trailing three to nothing. Clifford, a running threat, as we mentioned earlier, has rushed for 200 yards on the season. Came into tonight as their number three rusher for the year. And he rambles for the first down. Yeah, he's just going to see a little opening right there to his right. And he has he's good enough running the football to be a threat. Two games this year, he's been the team's leading rusher, and he has made some big plays with his feet. That one very important to keep the drive alive. Red shirt sophomore. Now the Cincinnati, Ohio, St. Xavier High School, traditional football power. Wow, what a throw. Oh. And the catch made by Jahan Dotson, first down Penn State into Iowa territory at the 46. He is going to get level right as he throws it. Epinesa with a quick rush inside. And somehow Clifford still able to get enough on this ball, throwing all the way to the opposite sideline. And Dotson makes the catch. That's a courageous throw by Sean Clifford. For a 14 yard gain, the longest play of the night for the Nittany Lions. Still just at 49 the yards of offense. This could be a double pass. pass. Dotson looked like he wanted to throw it. Apparently didn't find anybody open. James Franklin agitated as Christian Welch made the tackle for a loss on the play of about four. Clearly a backwards pass. The problem is, I'm not sure if Chisena, well, Chisena was supposed to be the deep throw. He was kind of showing block, but Iowa was not fooled, and that's why Dotson wasn't able to go anywhere with the football. Second and 14, the run fake, another beautiful throw to Hamler. Tackled from behind by Nick Neiman, an outside linebacker. Picked up by Nick Neiman. Well, this is a mismatch. You got a linebacker lined up over the slot, and Hamler gets immediate separation. They wanted to try to bang him, be physical with him when he's in the slot. That time, he just had a free release and an easy completion on second down. Players being very physical with our sideline cameras. Gain of 13, they're a yard short. It's third down and one. Devin Ford stacked up. Clifford thinks they have it. Cedric Lattimore made the first hit in the middle of that Iowa defense. It is a first down for Penn State. Drive here by Penn State. Couple completions by Clifford. A nice run on third down. And finding a rhythm now. They had 10 yards of offense in the first quarter. Devin Ford slides ahead near the 30. Really nice block that time by the center, Michael Manette. Manette. Nice job opening up that inside zone play, and Devin Ford ran right off his backside. Well played the drive. It's a Clifford run up the middle for a first down. To the 25-yard line. We're going to fake it to Devin Ford. That's going to cause defense to move that way. And the quarterback is just going to read. He reads Golston. He sees the blocks on the inside and gets right upfield and then does the smart thing of getting down and protecting both the football and his body. Couple nice runs now by Sean Clifford. And you can see he's starting to get more confident back in running the offense. Another design run for him. He gets bounced around by Chauncey Golston. Geno Stone came up to deliver a hit as well. These Penn State players and coaches talk a lot about Clifford's poise. Yeah. He's a lot like Chase McSorley in that he's a leader, a fiery competitor. A little bit antsy when you watch him bounce around on the sideline. Yeah. Brings a lot of energy, as McSorley did. Face now in the NFL with the Baltimore Ravens. Their third quarterback. High throw off the hands of Friar Mute. 
My, my guess, I don't know this, but my guess is that Sean Clifford's one of those guys, when he does ultimately go to sleep at night, he sleeps like a rock. Because when he's awake, he is bouncy and moving and jittery and jumping and talking, and he is a lively dude. And I know you're annoyed that he wears the number 14 because you oh, thought that should have been retired a long time ago. I'm very proud that he's wearing <laughs> Remember the top black legend uh, several other Penn State quarterbacks have worn with distinction over the years. Here's a big third down. It's a blitz that didn't get close, and it's a catch by K.J. Hamler leaping for the end zone. No signal yet. Touchdown, Penn State. Well, again, they're in base personnel, which means they have three linebackers. So this is Nick Neiman. He's lined up over K.J. Hamler. He's got to get a piece of K.J. Hamler. He can't let him break out like that because it's a mismatch if he doesn't get his hands or his body on him a little bit. And credit Sean Clifford for going at that matchup, realizing what he had, and getting the football to K.J. Hamler. That's two plays on this drive, exact same play against the exact same defense. KJ Hamler going high in the air. Here's a look from the progressive pylon camera to give us a pretty good view. They are reviewing. To make sure it is a touchdown. Let's bring in our rules expert, longtime on the field official Dave Kataya. What do you think, Dave? Well, the rule is here, since he goes airborne, that ball either has to go inside the pylon or over the top of the pylon. I don't see anything here that's going to change the call in the field so far. You see him airborne. So right now, if that ball's over the top or inside, it's a touchdown. So he's got to be over the top or inside since he went airborne. He doesn't touch in the end zone. He doesn't touch the pylon. It's a defender that touches the pylon. So inside or over. And I don't see anything, in my opinion, that changes the call on the field. 15 play touchdown drive if it stands they had run only 11 plays all night prior to this drive 15 plays their longest scoring drive of the season they're usually a quick strike team but they work methodically down the field against this Iowa team that makes you earn it yeah and I really think the the third down conversion where Sean Clifford ran the football was what jump started the offense here's the call now after further review the ruling on the field of touchdown stands K.J. Hamler, he was a force in their win at home against Iowa last year. He caught five balls for 96 yards. He had 188 all-purpose yards in the game, including a 67-yard kickoff return. And converted to third down all night. They went four for four on third down on that drive. Jake Pinnaker, the extra point. Jordan Stout to kick off. Here, Smith Marset's going to try it. And he's so talented, why wouldn't you? He's on pace to be the career leader in kickoff return yardage in the history of the Big Ten. And he sets them up near the 30 yard line. It's the end of that play again, a hard fall by KJ Hamler on his shoulder, his neck. Not a, a very big guy, super talented, but only 175 pounds at 5'9", and they are certainly making sure he's okay before they get the football back. I read a quote of his recently, he said, I'm an electric player. Getting the ball to me in space is dangerous for other teams, and he is right. very self-aware. At 188 all-purpose yards against the Hawkeyes last year in State College. Nate Stanley with Iowa trailing for the first time tonight. Tyler Goodson, one of the rare good plays on first down tonight for Iowa. Here's Holly. Well, guys, K.J. Hamler of Penn State was shaken up on that play as he came to the sideline. I heard James Franklin ask him, hey, you okay, man? He said, I think so. He's come over. He's talking to his teammates. He's kind of blinking his eyes, trying to move his neck around a little bit. He appears to be okay right now, but he definitely got the worst of that fall. Gain of nine on first down for Iowa. Those are 10th play on first down tonight. It's just the second. 
They gained more than two yards. And Goodson didn't have much to do to get the first down, but it didn't look from here like he got it. Yitor Gross Matos, outstanding defensive end with help from Fred Hansard. And Goodson is only 190 pounds, did not get that first down. Usually when they need that short yardage play, it's Torin Young, number 28, is their more physical back. This would suggest maybe they might even throw it on this third down. Quarterback sneak effectively on the fourth down play. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. He steps in there and plows ahead for a first down. Yeah, I like it. You know, they, first of all, they went to empty backfield, which suggested pass. And then they suddenly looked like he was just changing the protection and kind of goosed the center. You know, there's no snap count there. You just kind of give the center a little goose. You get the football and you, you follow him for the first down. He's a smart young man, two times academic all Big Ten. On the Dean's list in the spring semester here at the University of Iowa. Breaking free, Tyler Goodson. Taken out of bounds inside the 30 by the safety. Garrett Taylor, who was the last line of defense after Micah Parsons whipped. Well, watch the fullback. When they run the lead play, that's where the ball is going. Follow him, nice block on Micah Parsons. And then you see the speed of Goodson. For a 29-yard gain. From the 29. Pull back again. To the 25-yard line. That's Brady Ross going right at Micah Parsons again. I mean, they are running this weak side power game. They like what their fullback's giving them on. Throwback style, throwback uniforms yeah. tonight. Those uh, wings go back to 1994. Hayden Fry was the coach. They wore that Pittsburgh Steeler type uniform for such a long time. And they brought up the throwbacks tonight. And there's Goodson ran into a wall and then rejected for a loss on the play. A well, really good job by Penn State adjusting to the formation. When they saw where the tight end landed, they brought Garrett Taylor, the safety. Watch Garrett Taylor, the safety, come up and add an extra guy into the box. They couldn't block all of them. And also Fred Hansard right in the middle of that defense just kind of ate up a couple blocks, but good adjustment by Penn State on the fly. Third down and seven, nearing five minutes to go in the half. Penn State leading seven to three. Stanley retreating and just gets rid of it. Going in the direction of Nico Regani. And Kirk Ferrett sends out the field goal team. Really good coverage by Penn State. It was man coverage and everybody was, was locked up. And Stanley smartly throws the football away to at least preserve this opportunity to try for three more points. Keith Duncan connected from 47 yards out in the first quarter. This will be a 44 yard try. And that one is no good. Wide to the right. All right, Cassidy, thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to Iowa City, where 10th-ranked Penn State leads 7-3. to three. They scored a touchdown on their last drive after a sluggish start on offense, and that was Noah Kane on the first play of this possession, tackled by Austin Schulte. Yeah, they started to get their rhythm, that last possession. Running and throwing, K.J. Hamler with three big catches. And there's Noah Kane again. It looked like after their offensive line was getting overwhelmed, yeah. At the beginning of the game, they've gone to play calling. It doesn't make it so tough yeah. on the offensive line. Well, in that last possession, they actually had two other backups in. They had Des Holmes in at left tackle and C.J. Thorpe in at right guard. Now, the starting lineup is back out there on this possession, but those two guys did a pretty good job as well. Here's third down and two. They were four for four on third down on the touchdown drive. Iowa showing blitz. They bring pressure. Clifford a quick throw and a conversion again 
two Jahan Dobson with the defensive back Matt Hankins closing quickly. Really nice job by Clifford throwing this ball away from the inside help of the linebacker. Golston was dropping and Clifford had to make sure he didn't get this ball too far inside. Good conversion again on third down. That's five in a row now, right, for Penn State converting on third. And after the play fake, Clifford across the line of scrimmage now. Good well to hang on to the ball as he was tackled from behind by Chauncey Golston. He was looking deep down the field first. Had Daniel George going deep. Had Fryer Muth, the tight end, and going deep mid on your right. Golston almost stripped that ball out from behind. Very loose, carrying the football by Sean Clifford, but he's able to hold on to it. A quiet passing night so far for Clifford. Just five out of 12 for 60 yards. He handed off again to Noah Kane. We mentioned he's averaged 289 per game passing. He is the first Penn State quarterback to throw for at least 200 yards in each of the first five games of the season. They've done it every game prior to tonight. Throw only seven passes prior to this season, backing up Trace McSorley. Hands it off to Kane, and they convert another third down and two, and they're across midfield. See, this is what I like about Noah Kane. He's a little more physical. He's he's kind of a one-cut guy. He makes one cut, puts his foot in the ground, and goes north and south. He doesn't dance. He doesn't try to put too much wiggle on it, and I think that's why, to me, I think he's kind of separated himself from this pack of four running backs. But they're all four talented guys, no question. Then a five-man rush. Clifford in trouble, escapes, and throws it away. Nice job. Nice job throwing the football away. Davian Nixon was putting the pressure on. He couldn't get Clifford down onto the field turf. Five-man rush. They brought a linebacker, but the pressure came inside from Nixon, and Cl Clifford makes a really good decision just getting rid of the football. Two oh four to go in the half. Defensive battle, as you might expect. They're two of the top three teams in the country in scoring defense. On second and ten, Clifford steps up into the pocket. This throws too high. Looking for Dan Jacena. Who is a speedy receiver. Remember yes, the is. Penn State track team. James Franklin told us yesterday he might be the fastest guy on the team. Well, you better block this guy right here, Epinesa, 94. That's the freshman, redshirt freshman, Rasheed Walker, working against him here. Walker does a nice job. Clifford throws off the hands of Jahan Dobson, who is breaking free, slicing toward the middle with Michael Ojemudi in coverage. That's the exact same play that we showed in the open. K.J. Hamler's running the clear out, and Dotson's coming inside. This is good protection. Clifford steps up, buys a little bit of time, and makes a good throw. This is why I kind of expected Dotson to make, even though it was a little higher. Gilligan the pipe. And Regani the fair catch. We shall see. Oh, it's not. There's a hint. The opponent has 20 wins, so that would be more than Penn State's nine by our deductive reasoning. Yeah. Very important for Nate Stanley to take care of the football here. Their team is right in the football game. Don't make a critical mistake right before half. On their own 11, they do have three timeouts. But they, here they just like to get to the half, down 7-3. to three. Mackay Sargent. Well, Penn State will possibly use their timeouts. If they get a good stop here on second down, they'll use their timeouts. They have three. Right. Iowa has two. 
Interestingly, Iowa got up there pretty quickly, aggressively, and that's not a good idea. As Stanley is sacked back near the five-yard line, Jason Oway back up defensive end, a redshirt freshman, with his third sack of the season. And he beat the best offensive lineman, Tristan Wirfs, the right tackle. Yeah, penalty. Repeat second down. Big break. Big break. Because that was exactly what you can't do if you're Nate Stanley is take that sack or throw the ball to the wrong shirt. Penn State's going to get the football to start the third quarter. That is a real break for Iowa. Hard for us to, to even find the hold on that play. They bring the ball out to the 24-yard line. It's a first down for Iowa and a strike. Thrown to Nate Weeding, the tight end. He's out to midfield, so now the aggressive posture looks like a good idea for the Hawkeyes. Beautiful throw by Stanley under duress because Robert Windsor was coming right down on him and delivered a strike down the seam to his tight end. Nate Weeding named Iowa the walk-on, now a fifth-year senior. Another confident throw. It's Nate Weeding again. He lunges for the first down to the Penn State 40, a gain of 10 after a 25-yard play. So the clock will stop until they reset the change. Don't have to use a timeout or spike the ball here. There's this Iowa team known for tight ends. The two they had last year were both first-round draft picks in the spring. Great tradition of tight ends here. One minute to go in the half. Up for grabs and off the hands of Amir Smith-Marset. Now working on John Reed. And uh, Reed was in really good position. Smith-Marset is a little bit bigger at 6'1", 183. But John Reed didn't give up his position. They stayed right in there. And good defense by John Reed. Incomplete over the middle. Micah yeah. Parsons put the heat on Nate Stanley. Yeah, he just came on an inside blitz. The back was late getting there. Sargent should have been in position to help his quarterback out. He got caught looking outside, and Micah Parsons just drilled his quarterback. You know, and the, and the thing about that, that kind of hit affects you on this play if you're Nate Stanley trying to make a throw on third and ten now. Iowa's gone more than 100 minutes without a touchdown against Power 5 competition. Uh, timeout call now by Iowa. The play clock was running down. You saw they took a long time in the huddle. Although his team told me he had absolutely nothing to do uh, with the victory. But it was pleasant coming. Actually, he's a sandbagging 18 in. That was his kind of report. Here's Stanley throwing day for an open receiver, Smith Marset. Dragged down inside the five. First and goal for Iowa. I think Tariq Castro Field stumbles a little bit. It's a little double move. There's the stumble on the fake slant and go, and a beautiful throw by Nate Stanley. Castro Fields bit on the slant fake and then kind of lost his foot. On first and goal. Bang down to Kai Sargent. Robert Windsor, Yitor Gross Matos combined on the stop. Gross Matos was so fast off the ball. Watch him just shoot right inside and get the sergeant in the backfield. So quick for a guy that big. And, and, and Iowa needs a touchdown, yes. Sean. They, they can't afford to go for a field goal and be 7 6. Penn State's offense is starting to get a little better feel. They're going to score touchdowns. You have to take advantage of this field position with a touchdown. And now they've used their last timeout. I really think the timeout they took when the play clock was running down was a smart idea. It gave Nate Stanley a chance to compose himself after that hard hit. And now they had to use it there. Stanley can't take a sack here. If it's not there, he's got to throw the football away through the end zone. 
cannot take a sack. I would expect maybe some kind of a rub or pick type play. Maybe from a bunch set or a three receivers to one side type setup. Here they come down to the bottom of the screen. Now, if that safety stays in the middle right here, you got one on one coverage up the top. They blitz. Stanley looks in that direction. It's behind Brandon Smith. And he had him. He had Brandon Smith on the slant. It's a bad throw. He gets inside. You put that ball right on the right side of him. And that's a touchdown. And Nate Stanley just not able to make a good throw there on second down. They had what they wanted coverage-wise, just didn't execute the throw. It's hard to figure out really who Nate Stanley is. You know, yeah. Sometimes you watch Iowa play, he looks terrific. Brent Pry, the defense coordinator for Penn State, and when he's on, he's as good as anybody in the conference, but he's not always on or even close to it. They rush only four this time, and Stanley is in retreat. He throws incomplete. Well, this time he did not have anybody open. Good coverage. It was a zone coverage by Penn State. They only rushed four, and Nate Stanley had to throw the football away. He had his shot on second down. On third down, Penn State won the down with their coverage. First and goal on the three, and this Iowa team that just can't find the end zone. They'll settle for another field goal attempt. Duncan is one out of two. He's two out of three as he converts from 24 yards. I think it's a defensive football team that is outstanding. There's a squib kick by Caleb Chudak, who's A.J. Hamlin. And Penn State will start near the 35-yard line. On the last possession, looked like uh, Clifford might have been poked in the eye. He lost his mouth piece as you see on uh, the swipe by Epinesa he was reaching for his left eye it's not been uh, as easy I mean <laughs> you know the last two weeks I mean they were they were scored 28 points before anybody you know had their popcorn in, in the Maryland the Purdue game tonight it's been a little bit different ball game but they content to take a knee from their 32 yard line all three of their timeouts left Stanley looks like he might be dealing with some sort of arm issue. As they head to the locker room at the end of the first half here in Iowa City. 7-6 Penn State. Last year, Iowa had the ball in the final seconds with a chance to win the game at Happy Valley. Did not score a touchdown and lost by six. It'll be Penn State ball to begin the second half. Caleb Shudak will kick off. Virtually no breeze now in the stadium. Wind is three miles per hour. It was a very windy afternoon here. Temperatures dropped to 45 degrees as the second half begins. KJ Hamlin from the goal line. And down at 20. Journey Brown is the running back to begin the second half. Sean Clifford dumps it over the middle to KJ Hamlin. And he's ahead for seven. You mentioned the Iowa field goals. They haven't scored a touchdown against a Power 5 team. We're taking Middle Tennessee State out. They hammered Middle Tennessee. Their last touchdown against a Power 5 team was in their win at Iowa State with 12-10 to go in the fourth quarter. They played 102 minutes without a touchdown against a Power 5 team. Clifford down in the arms of Chauncey Golston. And it'll be third down and short. Penn State going to their two tight end package here. Journey Brown remains the running back. Clifford looking at the sideline for some guidance on third and one. They give it to Brown. He has the first down and cannot break free of the 
tackle by the safeties Jack Kerner and Geno Stone both outstanding tacklers both tied for third on the team in tackles for the year entering tonight a good tough run that time by Journey Brown those yards are hard to come by Penn State with only 62 yards rushing in the ball game so far but nice conversion on third down they've been excellent on third down so far tonight just 129 yards of offense they've been out game the slant and the catch made by Justin Shorter with Matt Hankins in coverage nice throw by Sean Clifford first down at the 44 Yeah, a little play action RPO type throw he's on time he gets his hips around accurate throw good footwork leads to accurate throwing a nice catch by Shorter big target at 6 4 he was out with an injury last week against Purdue the coaches were happy to be getting him back Brown across midfield first down gain of about seven maybe even eight and a nice start to the half for Penn State Michael Panette Steven Gonzalez excellent blocks on the inside on that play Ricky Slade now in at running back and it looks like he has just enough for the first down inside the Iowa 46. Well, let's see what Iowa does differently if anything when KJ Hamler is in the slot in the second half. Are they going to get up on him a little bit tighter and try to put a little contact on him. Neiman's over him again right now. Slade finds some running room. He's chopped down at the 40. Again, it's the safety Jack Kerner flying up to make the play. First year starter out of Des Moines. A couple nice runs by Ricky Slade. Coming in the game, of the four guys, he had the, the least amount of yards per carry. Only 2.1 yards per carry. Highly, highly regarded. Recruited player out of Woodbridge, Virginia. He was an Under Armour All-American in high school. The Gatorade Virginia Player of the Year. He's in trouble, stacked up and dropped for a loss back at the 41. Chauncey Golston, boy, the more you watch Iowa play, the more you notice the big defensive end. Yeah, here he is right here. Watch him just hold the edge of the defense. He's going to play fundamentally sound. He doesn't get picked outside. He had eight tackles last week in Michigan. He's having another fine night tonight. That was in a homecoming for him. He's from Detroit, first-year starter. As a red shirt junior, here's another big third and five. Penn State started slowly on third down, 0 for 3. They converted with regularity since, but not now. A.J. Epinesa flattened Clifford back at the 46. Well, if you want a definition of a bull rush, you're going to see it on this replay. This is called a bull rush on Rasheed Walker, the left tackle. Just runs right through him on the way to the quarterback. Led the Big Ten in sacks a year ago. He's gotten a lot of double teams and chips this year. It's been frustrating. That time he got blocked one on one and he dominated his opponent. The rule the quarterback was down before the ball came out. Here's Gilligan. Beautiful ball. The end will be down inside the five. 22 drives without a touchdown against Power Five competition. They find a hole on first down, their first play from scrimmage of the second half. is about an eight-yard run for Torin Young. Here's Holly. Well, Nick Stanley did hang in there, Todd, as you mentioned, but Kirk Ferentz said he was under pressure in the first half. He did take a couple of big hits, and he said, we just have to play better up front. Remember, they are missing their starting right guard. Defensively, though, they've had a huge lift from those starters back. Two guys came back that have been starters, Matt Hankins, um, and on their defensive front, they've had a great lift from Brady Reese being back as well. They've been able to be a little bit more multiple in the back end because they've got a nickel back in as well. A fade up for grabs and caught. Amir Smith Marset nicely executed by Iowa to the 29 to 17 yard pickup and a first down. Second time they beat Tariq Castro Fields. He just had no idea where the football was. It was underthrown. Smith Marset came back for it, and Castro Fields just never knew where the football was. And just like that, they're outside of the five yard line, and a little momentum offensively for Iowa to start the third quarter. Fourth catch for Amir Smith Marset. He's their leading receiver for the year, 23 catches now. And a 
very short set, and Stanley went for the fake, and by the time he finished it, he was done. Robert Windsor with the sack for Penn State. This is not on the quarterback. Here's Windsor right here. He's just going to run right through the center and the left guard, and when pressure comes from the middle, a quarterback has no chance. I mean, he did not have enough time to do anything on that play. Robert Windsor, a fifth-year senior, playing the best football of his career. Big play there for the Penn State defense. We made him a game captain for tonight. James Franklin said, I hope it helps inspire him, because last year we made him a captain for the Wisconsin game, and he was the Big Ten Player of the Week. Drop pass on target to the redshirt freshman Tyrone Tracy out of Indianapolis, and he just dropped it. Yeah, just tried to run before he had to catch. He was looking upfield, wanted to see where Micah Parsons was coming from. And that's a play you just want to get a completion and get yourself third and eight, third and nine, instead of third and long like they are here. As good as your defense is playing, if you're Nate Stanley, don't take any unnecessary risk on this third and long play. Still with the ground game. Tyler Goodson had two backs on the field. Makai Sargent was also out there. It's not a bad decision. You know, your defense is playing well enough for you to win. You're struggling on offense. You're not protecting your quarterback the greatest. Don't put yourself in harm's way on third and 17. And this is back to the Iowa formula. They were out of character last week with all the penalties and the sacks allowed. Neither team has committed a turnover tonight. And it's been penalty free as well. Iowa has not committed a penalty after they had eight last week. Went into that game averaging four per game. Good punt by Michael Sleep Dalton. Fair catch by KJ Hamlin. Here's Clifford in the offense. After a 45 yard punt by Iowa's Michael Sleep Dalton. Clifford, seven for 17. By far his worst game of the season, but not surprising. That's the best defense he's faced. Spins away from trouble and throws it away. Here's Cassidy Hubbard. Holding penalty here, Cassidy against Penn State on the left tackle, the freshman Rashid Walker. Yeah, he's having a, he's having some problems right now with AJ Epinesa. AJ Epinesa is a big, powerful man. Look at that, the hands, how strong his hands are, rushing the passer. On first and twenty, Clifford. He's across the line of scrimmage, and he gets flattened by Cedric Lattimore. Good coverage downfield because Clifford just was not able to get rid of the football. Initially, it's pretty good protection. Once he leaves the pocket, good sound discipline from inside out that time, and a hard hit at the end of the play. Second and 16. Quick throw by Clifford and dropped by Daniel George. One of the things that Iowa has done so well over the years, they take away what you do well. Yeah. Friar Muth doesn't have a catch. Today. Right. They think the Penn State coaches do. He might be the best tight end in the country. They've kept Hamler in check, 48 yards receiving. And they don't allow big plays. Penn State's had one play over 20 yards in the pass game. That was the Hamler for 22 yards. Coordinated by Phil Parker. He's been on the staff here at Iowa for all of Kirk Ferentz's 21 years as head coach. Clifford has a lot of running to do to get to the marker. And you talk about team tally. Look like they had about six guys there. It wasn't quite that many. I'll tell you what, he got hit hard this possession. Two or three times on this one possession. Sean Clifford got knocked around. Trying to make a play with his feet. And... Uh, <laughs> Doesn't end well for number 14 this time. Well, you look at him, his body, there's Phil Parker. What a terrific job he does. You look at Clifford, you wouldn't think he'd be in a depth run, but he really has been a threat all year. 
Where Gilligan hits a rocket. Look out. I don't think he touched it. touched it. I don't think so either. And it's down inside the test. The head coach is the football program here in Iowa City. Last year, Kurt Ferentz passed his great friend Hayden Fry to become the winningest coach here at Iowa. Next Saturday night, you'll see these Nittany Lions again at home, hosting the Michigan Wolverines, who won today at Illinois. That's next Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Be a whiteout up there at Penn State, Happy Valley. James Franklin hoping they're 6-0 and as they welcome Jim Harbaugh's team. Kirk Ferentz hoping for a career win for 154 here at Iowa. Good throw by Stanley and a catch by Regain. He got belted out of bounds. Not a lot of room over there on the sidelines. He stands very close. James Franklin said this is as tough a place to play as any place he's ever been. Not a lot of room for the camera people to get out of the way, unfortunately, but that's how close the folks are to the teams. Officials time out here for a measurement. Tell you what, that was a heck of a tackle. We've seen John Reed with a couple physical tackles. That, that kept that ball, I think, from short of the first down. And we talk about the continuity. We look at the end of the play again. John Reed, Lamont Wade combining, but John Reed throws his body around there at the corner position. When Hayden Fry got here in 1979, just to give you an idea of the two coaches since that period of time, Kirk Ferentz was 24 years old. Oh, my. <laughs> and he was starting out on a coaching career. He had just graduated from the University of Connecticut. And he was an assistant coach at Worcester Academy. They're just short. It'll be a third and one. Loyalty, the connections, the friendships, the relationships. <laughs> and the Kenny O'Keefe's still with Kirk 40 years later. Joe Philbin's here to cheer him on. His daughter, Colleen, is a freshman here at the University of Iowa working in the football office. It's a special place. This is my first time here. Of course, I've known Kirk Ferentz. My dad knows Kirk Ferentz very well. Former offensive line coaches together. and uh, But I'm, I'm so impressed with the feel of this place. Tim Welsh told me we were 4-4 four and because four we had a bad quarterback. And he was the quarterback. <laughs> Kendall Keefe said Timmy's right. He picked the right sport when he went into basketball. <laughs> terrific basketball coach. But, uh, how about that for a staff at a prep school in the 1970s? Mike Sherman on the coach the Packers. Here's a fumble. Goodson lost it. Penn State thinks they have it. P.J. Mustafer popped the ball out. And the Lions do have the football. A huge turnover by Iowa. Todd, you can say it might come down to a turnover, and here's the first one of the game by Iowa, deep in their own territory. Here's Mustafer. I don't know what the line is doing because the center is going to pull this way. Nobody cuts off Mustafer. Nobody blocks him right in the middle of the defensive formation. He not only gets the tackle, he knocks the ball out. Jan Johnson is the guy that comes up with it. But that was a miscommunication by the Iowa offensive line, allowing that penetration inside. Goodson was juggling the ball before Mustafer even got there. So can Iowa hold here at the 16-yard line and force a field goal? A quick toss to Journey Brown. And he gets stood up just shy of the 10-yard line. Jack Kerner made the tackle. It does not appear that Iowa has, has taken any different approach to K.J. Hamler in the slot. Now he's on the short side of the field on the slot. They swing it to him. How about those moves in a first down? Wow. Like he'd be stopped with nothing. Instead, it's first and goal for Penn State. He's a difference maker. I mean, he's as dynamic of a guy as there is in college football. You get him the football in space and let him do his thing makes three guys miss in a phone booth to get the first down. He's a sophomore, and give it to Journey Brown, bouncing outside and walking into the end zone, but there is a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. Holding, offense number 71. 
10 yard penalty, still first down. Will Fries, the right tackle. He was holding on Golston. Golston was trying to spin out right here is the guy who's going to get held. Will Fries, number 71, the right tackle. Right there is Golston's trying to get away to the outside. He gets tackled. No question about the call. Pretty good pair of defensive ends here at Iowa, both of these teams for that matter, but Golston an emerging force with Evanessa. Quick pop over the middle. There's Friar Muth. His first catch of the night is a touchdown. They lined him up in the backfield, so he was the third receiver on that side. Does his knee come down before the ball crosses the plane? He's reaching, stretching. I think it's tough to tell. Yeah. Close. Knee was down called, there. Yeah, I think the ball's across the plane when the knee's down. It's very close. It was ruled a touchdown. On the progressive pylon camera, yeah, I think the call will stand. Let's bring in Dave Kataya, our rules expert. Sean, good point. The bottom line is the runner's down when anything other than the hand or foot uh, touches. The knee is down there, but from the shots we saw, there's not enough to change this call in the field. In fact, I'd lean to being a touchdown. Here we go. All right, you've got it. You got the hand. That doesn't count. Now you got the knee, and right now the ball looks like it's broken the plane right. on the goal line. That's what it looked like to me. Any part of the ball, doesn't have to be the whole ball, any part of the ball breaking the front edge of the goal line makes this a touchdown. To me, that's a touchdown. Tom Kissinger is the replay official. Sean. Ryan, where's number 87? He's from Massachusetts, and he's already drawing some comparisons to Rob Gronkowski. Right. There's a lot to prove to be regarded as that kind of a player, but I think he has the potential. He has the size, he has the athleticism, very similar to Gronk. And that's his 12th career touchdown, and they really did a nice job of finding a way to get him the football in the red zone. He's had a quiet night. They lined him up in the backfield. A lot of attention paid to K.J. Hamler, who was right outside of him in the slot. And he's able to slip inside for the touchdown catch. Looking at this for a very long time. And here he is right here. Now outside of him is Hamler. He's just going to slip in here after the play action fake. The safety's going to go to the top to help on Hamler. And it's just a quick throw to the big tight end. That's a big target in the middle of the formation. And they get him a get him a chance to get his hands on the football. And then he does the rest getting it to the end zone. I go back to the old thing about if it takes this long, it's not conclusive. Yeah. And you're looking at the replay. Right. And they're still looking at it. Friar Muth. An athletic family. His dad played basketball at St. Anselm's College in New Hampshire. His uncle, many uh, football fans remember, Mike Foley was the uh, longtime football coach, college football coach, head coach at Colgate. And his cousin, uh, Pat Foley, was his coach, Pat's coach at Brooks School, north of Boston, a distinguished private school where a lot of the coaches around New England said he might have been the best player in New England when he was in high school. After further review, the runner's knee was down before the ball broke the plane of the goal line. Wow. As a result, the ball will be placed at the one foot line on the left hash. It'll be second down, and the clock will start on the ready for play. Well, let's go back to the progressive pylon camera again. I'd be curious if Tom Kissinger could uh, tell us which view that he looked at where he thought it was conclusive. And he's down there, but the ball, to me, looks like wow. it's broken the plane of the end zone. Take the touchdown away. Now it's Jeremy Brown. He's not into the end zone. Let's bring Dave Kataya back in on that replay review. What do you think of how that all transpired? Well, Sean, you said it was right. I mean, to me, that is not enough to reverse the call of the play. It's close. I don't see anything that clearly 100% made him short. They do have a quad system where can freeze four plays, but still, from what I see, no. Penn State trying to make that a moot point here inside the one yard line. Look for the threat to run himself. And now he lobs it to the back of the end zone. Incomplete. There's a flag down. There was a pile up in the middle of the end zone. 
Now Clifford's pass went way out of the back of the end zone. C.J. Thorpe, the right guard, was halfway through the end zone. So it could be an ineligible man downfield. That was supposed to be just a pop pass. It was covered. And so Clifford was throwing it away. But C.J. Thorpe was all the way to about the middle of the W in the end zone. Officials really have been background players in this game. All of a sudden, they're at the center center of it, along with the replay official holding. And now he wants to know if Kirk Ferentz wants to accept holding. it. Holding, offense number 69, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. There's Would no have been fourth for intentional and goal grounding. From the one. There was an eligible receiver in the vicinity. Third down. I'm just trying to figure out how that was <laughs> holding. He was literally in the end zone. Here's C.J. Thorpe, the right guard. He's going to end up in the middle of the end zone. So, I, I, I don't know. I don't see that either. Oh, there it is. He pulled him down, and he was on the W. That's where the hold was. Still Fourth and goal from the one, and a decision for James Franklin. It's third and goal. Here's Clifford. Lots of running room, and he breaks a tackle and scores the touchdown. Another flag down, though, Sean, in the area of holding again. Rare missed tackle by Iowa was Michael Ojemudia, who didn't get him on the ground. I think Steven Gonzalez, the left guard, was holding. holding. Offense number 74. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Boy, boy, this is a tough drive. Here it is right here, number 74. As the play starts to break outside, there's the grab and the hold. Holding on Davion Nixon as he's trying to get to the quarterback. And I think it's the right call. But how big does that replay overturn look now? Unbelievable. They're back on the 20-yard line. Third down and goal. Clifford just looking for somewhere to go. Ducks down at the 15-yard line. I'm surprised they didn't try to throw it there. That looked like a design run for Clifford, and it's hard to imagine he's going to run through the middle of that defense for 20 yards. Yeah. I think that one was just a let's settle for the field goal here. We've gone backwards a lot on this drive. Let's get points and get out of here. So here's Jake Pinnegar, an Iowa native. He's from Ankeny, Iowa. Four out of five this season. The only miss was last week against Purdue from 35 yards. Snap and hold are good, and it's a happy homecoming for Pinnegar. 33 yard kick. And it's 10 6 Penn State, but they'll be talking for a long time about the replay review. Of what appeared to be the touchdown by Pat Fryermuth, especially if Penn State does not win this game. Well, there's no question the knee came down. It just appeared that the ball, some part of the ball, had crossed the plane of the goal line. I mean, to me, that confirms the call. Yeah. So his knee's touching now, and that ball, and that's the pylon cam right down the line, yep. is breaking the plane in the end zone. Just has to get over the front part of the line. And it was called a touchdown. So basically, they're saying that they saw something that completely overturned what was called on the field. And that, that was very surprising to me. We saw a couple shots of James Franklin, who was visibly upset. And it has to do with the replay view and also the penalties. Although I think after that, the penalty calls were pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, the, the penalty calls were clear for sure. That. So they settle for a field goal after the touchdown came off the board. And that's a huge development, just a four-point lead now for the Nittany Lions. Here's the kickoff from Jordan Stout. It'll be another touchback. With 2.08 to get the ESPN, ESPN Deportes on the app. Nate Stanley has him in. First down, Brandon Smith fights for extra yards. The ball has come out. Keaton Ellis was there to help rip it out. Or they're going to spot it back at the 41-yard line. It's an Iowa recovery at the 41. 
and a first down. That looks like Torin Young, the tailback, who got a great block on Cam Brown, is the guy who's going to hustle down and get on this loose football. So two nice plays by Torin Young on the same play. Juan Brisker ripped it out for Penn State. Young remains the running back. Avoids the contact behind the line. Wow. And a hard earned gain of six there for Torrin Young. Garrett Taylor, the safety, made the tackle. Torrin Young is the bigger of the backs, a little more power, but I'll tell you what, Garrett Taylor has made a couple really nice open field tackles on bigger bodies. Nice play. Second down plays killed Iowa at Michigan last week, and they've not been very nice to them tonight either. Big second down and four here. Final minute of the third quarter. Nate Stanley checking at the line of scrimmage here. And the fullback Brady Ross in the game, leading the way for the run by Torrin Young. It comes up about a yard short of the first down. Tariq Castro fields the tackle for Penn State. Well, when they've had these short yardage, they've gone quarterback sneak three times tonight. It looks like they might do it again here. Trying to line up quickly to do it. Penn State ready for it now. Can Iowa shove them across the line? There's a flag down. I don't think Iowa was set. I don't think all 11 guys were set. They tried to snap it quickly. Offense number 39. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's one of the tight ends. Nate Weeding was not set. They, they were up and down moving. The ball was snapped. They fooled him with that quarterback sneak three times. That time Penn State was ready and Iowa was not set. And that's a costly penalty. Instead of third and one, it's third and six. Doesn't sound like much, but when your offense is struggling, that's a huge penalty. First one walked off against Iowa tonight. They wanted to be more balanced. Can't get much more balanced than 27 rushes and 27 passes. They thought they got pass happy at Michigan. Open receiver, Nico Regani, first down and much more. They're at the 37-yard line of Penn State, but it looks like there's another flag on the field. This is going to be defensive holding on Penn State. Tyrone Tracy got held coming off the football, and it'll be declined in a first down for Iowa. I, I think that's what happened, and looking at the replay, I think he got held coming off the ball. Holding. Defense number seven. That penalty is declined. Yardage results in a first down. Juan Brister, junior safety. First year at Penn State out of Lackawanna College, junior college. Tyrone Tracy right there. He's held right now, coming off the ball. He's, he's held from the beginning of the play. And Regani comes right underneath in a three-receiver set. Nice conversion for Iowa. That's the end of the third quarter here in Iowa City. Defensive struggle, as you might expect, between teams that were second and third in the country. In scoring defense coming in, Penn State and Iowa, respectively. Penn State leads 10 to 6, but it's Iowa on the move. They're at the 37-yard line of Penn State, first and 10. Four-man rush, Nate Stanley, flushed. Throws on the run, diving attempt incomplete. It was Nate Weeding, the tight end, trying to rescue it. Good coverage downfield and a good decision by Nate Stanley. I'll tell you what, Windsor is really creating some havoc on the inside. Nobody really open. Weeding trying to come back to the football. Stanley just getting rid of it to avoid the sack. Back to the I formation. See, right now, Stanley read blitz from Cam Brown on the outside. He showed a blitz a little bit early. And they do charge after the ball and drop it for a loss. They can't block Robert Windsor right now. Right now, Windsor is killing them on the inside. Now, Cam Brown came in, but watch Windsor get into the backfield. Cam Brown comes from the outside, but Windsor is just destroying things on the inside. He's quick and he's powerful, and he is whipping the center and guards right now on that Iowa front. Torin Young dropped for the loss. 
Fifth year senior from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, Robert Windsor, and a terrific player at Penn State. Only a half career sacks. Here's pressure again. Deep throw, single coverage, and twisting around was Nico Regini. Couldn't find the ball. Lamont Wade had the coverage, and on fourth down, it looks like the punter, Michael Sleep Dalton, is going to come on. Once again, Windsor working inside. Ripping by the left guard, Landon Paulson. He is proving to be a handful right now. James Franklin said we make him a game yeah. captain. He plays big. He's a game captain tonight. And you can see why this Penn State defense leads the nation, not only in sacks, but in tackles for loss. They attack the line of scrimmage. Terrific athletes at every level. They're very well coached as well by Brent Fry and that defensive staff. Sleep Dalton's punt it is a fair catch by Hamler. Penn State will start at the 10. Penn State with the ball, a four point lead, 14 minutes to go. Sean Clifford picked it off quickly to Noah Kane. Wow, Breaks run, tackles, moves the pile, and has a first down up to the 22 yard line. Yeah, that's the thing that I notice about Noah Kane is he moves the pile. Whether it's inside or in this case outside. He moves bodies when he runs the football. Come up to the line quickly. Sean Clifford hands it off to Noah Kane again. Let's go back to Cassidy's update for a second. Seems like people want to doubt Florida. Yeah. They played a good schedule. They keep winning. Everybody, a lot of people thought Auburn was going to win at right. Florida. Is it time to acknowledge that Absolutely. Florida's legit? Well, I think people have, have acknowledged their defense was legit, but Kyle Trask is playing great football at quarterback. Prior view, catch and run, and a first down to the 36. Holly? Well, after that last disastrous drive where Penn State took some touchdowns off the board with costly penalties in that, re in that replay, the offensive line came to the sideline, and they were furious with themselves. They've all been talking over here. They said, we've got to be smarter out here. They're much play playing much cleaner on this drive. Playing a little up-tempo here, trying to establish some rhythm. Noah Kane, the ball carrier again. And they keep asking James Franklin, as one of these running backs established himself now as the lead guy. I think what's more important, Todd, than who starts the game is who's in there now. Right. You need to keep the ball, move the ball, get first downs, and it's clear that he likes Kane. They fake it to him. They toss it out of space to Handler. Look out. Taken down by Nick Neiman. Dad Jay is on the staff here at Iowa. His brother Ben played here at Iowa with distinctions, now with the Kansas City Chiefs. This is almost like a running play. You bring him in jet motion and you throw it to him out in space behind the line of scrimmage and let him make people miss. Instead of running him inside, you get him outside to do it. Here's Kane for about eight more. Tempo seems to be helping Penn State and clearly moving more rapidly on this drive. And they move from their own 10 to the Iowa 45. Kane spun around, but he lunged ahead. It looks like he has the first down. Cedric Lattimore made the tackle. You mentioned who's in the game at running back at this point. It's Noah Kane. Same thing last week against Purdue. After they got a little stagnant in the second and third quarter, Offensively, their last touchdown drive, aside from an 11-yard pass, every play was Noah Kane running the football for a Penn State touchdown. James Franklin and the Nittany Lions trying to get 12 straight wins against teams from the Big Ten West. Here's Hamlin. The time we talked during the week about Hamler, and you said he reminds you of Percy Harvin. Yeah. Watching him play in person again tonight, I think that's a terrific comparison and analogy. Yeah, he, he does so many similar things. So many, the skill sets are very, very similar. Not just the uniform number, the skill sets are almost identical. Tackled from behind is Clifford by Brady Reef, the brother of one of those great offensive linemen we pictured earlier, Riley Reef, a first round pick of the Detroit Lions. Back in 
2012. You know, this might be two down territory here for James Franklin, Penn State's offense, if they don't convert on this third down. A little bit far for a field goal attempt here. Wilford waves Ricky Slade away. Wants to throw quickly and does, but it's low and away for K.J. Handler. And that's a big miss. Now on fourth down, we'll see what James Franklin does. Hamler was open. Sean Clifford tried to throw it a little bit quick, and it was just an errant throw. And he's going to punt the football, try to continue to play field position to his defense. He leads by four, and he's playing against an Iowa team that hasn't scored a touchdown in a long, long time. Against power five opponents. Wow, is that well done. Like Gillikin the punt. They're down by four with 10-13 to go. And after the excellent punt and coverage, Iowa from its own four. Stanley out of the end zone. Hit as he throws. Looks like it was a forward pass. His arm came forward. The ball went forward, but no whistles. And now Penn State is saying that it has scored a touchdown, and the officials concur on the field is an incomplete forward pass. Second down. It was Shaka Tony who came on an inside stunt. He's the outside defensive end. He came inside on a direct path to the quarterback. Here he is right here working inside. Yeah, I think the arm was coming forward. He was close to losing control of the football as that arm was coming forward. He double clutched it, but I do think he got the ball out as an incomplete pass at the very last second. We're up front for Iowa tonight. There's a couple times where Penn State defenders have just run right through the middle of the line. Now another whistle. Boy, it now, was I think I think James Franklin either was calling a timeout or he wants them to take another look at that play. where he wants a better explanation of what the call was there. I saw Sean Spencer saying that arm wasn't coming all the way forward. He's the defensive line coach. They call themselves the Wild Dogs. And they Penn State are... <laughs> has called a timeout, challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. Timeout. I think it's, it's like that group up front right now smells blood in the water. You know, they, they are really cranking it up. Windsor on the inside. Well, let's bring in Dave Kataya. The ruling on the field after some conversation among the officials was incomplete forward pass. As you've looked at a couple of replays, what do you think, Dave? Well, he, you've got, if you have. If you have control of the ball, when your hand or arm starts forward, it's a forward pass. To me, he doesn't lose control of the ball. He has it when his hand starts forward. We'll continue to take a look at it. We'll step aside and be back in Iowa City in just a moment. Sergeant, the ball carrier. Now there's a flag, it seems, on every play. Yeah. While you were away, John O'Neill said the ruling of an incomplete pass was confirmed by replay, so it cost Penn State a timeout. They cannot challenge for the rest of the game. And just as we were coming back, Sergeant, for a short game, there is a holding call here against Iowa if James Franklin wants to accept Holding. it. Offense number 74. That penalty is declined. Third down. It was Tristan Wirfs holding on Shaka Tony. Tony was coming inside again. Number 74, you see that quick inside move by Tony, and there was the holding call. I think I enjoyed it a lot more in the first half when we weren't noticing the officiating in the replay booth all the time. Big play here, third down and eight. State will try to force Iowa to punt from its own end zone. Stanley back in the end zone, throws it up, and incomplete. And there's a flag down. Amir 
Smith Marset get tangled up with Jaquan Brisker. Actually, I think it was John Reed that he got tangled up with. Brisker was coming over the top to help on the safety, but I think it was 29. Press interference, defense number 29. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. In the slot, John Reed just, it wasn't much. He, he did turn him a little bit. Yeah, it looked like Smith Marset sold a little bit. Yeah. His head snapping back. Boy, what another costly penalty for Penn State. They had him pinned back deep, and now a first down outside the 20 yard line. Seventh penalty against Penn State, and Dudley and Happy Valley, they're still unhappy about the overturned touchdown. Standing up, blasted, and throws an interception. Jaquan Brisker after Stanley got leveled on the throw. Well, it was Robert Windsor again, who has just been unleashed here in the fourth quarter. He got to the quarterback, forced the bad throw, and Brisker comes away with the interception. Watch Windsor, number 54, right there, just blow by. Number 73, Cody Ince, who's in there at guard or at left tackle. Oh, my goodness. And Ince had been a backup. He's seen a lot of playing time tonight. We mentioned they lost Cole Banwert, a starting guard, at practice on Wednesday with a torn ACL. Second turnover of the night for Iowa. Noah Kane stopped at the line of scrimmage. They had committed one turnover all season prior to last week's game against Michigan. They turned it over four times there and twice here in the second half tonight. Penn State has not turned it over. It's not a good ratio. They've scored a total of nine points in the last two games. They've turned it over six times. Clifford keeps. Well, if you're Penn State right now, obviously you want more points, but you want to eat clock, too. Your defense has played brilliantly. Iowa has not shown the ability to sustain a drive. You want to eat clock and score what you can here on this drive. Touchdown might put the game away. Movement, yes. flags down. They are in field goal Full range. Start. Offense, every player but the center. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Jordan Stout, they have two field goal kickers. Jordan Stout kicks the ball from 50 plus. He has a very strong leg. He kicked a 57 yarder earlier this season. The school record. Iowa has subbed. They, they don't play nickel defense too much, but they're in a nickel right now. And Riley Moss is lined up over KJ Hamler now. So instead of a linebacker, it's a cornerback there. There's another defensive back who returned this week. Good fake by Clifford. He has the first down and more. What a move by the quarterback, Sean Clifford. At 6'2", 216, he is surprisingly nimble. Well, he did a great job of faking Amani Jones, number 52, with the little pinch fake. Now, I'll tell you about this guy. He is a guy who improved his speed since he's been at Penn State. Noah Kane. Fighting for every yard down to the 21 yard line. We're nearly midway through the fourth quarter now. When we met with Sean Clifford before the pit game a few weeks ago, we found out that he came to Penn State running a 4 7 40. He's down to 4 5 now. He, he is a guy who got increasingly faster through the strength and conditioning program at Penn State, and he is a very nifty runner. Highly recruited out of Cincinnati, had more than 30 scholarship offers. But Hit Penn State very early in the process. Here he comes again, sliding down, shy of the line to make. John Clifford, the ball carrier. Dylan Doyle was nearby, backup linebacker, the son of the strength coach here. Chris Doyle's been with Kirk Ferentz for all 21 years. And it looked like he was going to pick up the first down. He slid down short of it, so here's third down and one. Noah Kane, the running back. Now Clifford 
Hamilton for a second. They might try what Iowa has done a couple times tonight with Stanley sliding on the center for a quarterback sneak. Kane stays on his feet. First and goal, Penn State. At the eight-yard line, Jack Kerner missed the tackle. Dylan Doyle made it for the Hawkeyes. Uh, just this power running. Again, when you play four to running backs, they should all be fresh in the fourth quarter, and Noah Kane is the guy they're leaning on here when the game's on the line in the fourth quarter. Huge sequence here. The way I was playing offense, it certainly feels like a touchdown here for Penn State, and it's ball game over, even though there's six minutes to go. Iowa almost has to force a field goal. It's Kane. Ran into Jack Kerner. And again, Penn State in no hurry here. The clock is on their side. It's their friend. They want to take as much time as they as they can. They're not huddling, but they're also not playing fast right now either. Penn State trying to remain undefeated. Go to six and all. Five and a half minutes to go. Help again from the sideline. Ricky Ronnie is the offensive coordinator. Pitch quickly to Kane. Has some room. Has a touchdown. This is a great check by Ricky Ronnie at the line of scrimmage. Once he saw what Iowa's defense was, there was not enough defenders outside so they went to the quick pitch see there's only two two corner people out here the linebacker had to come all the way from the inside who was responsible for Noah Kane Ricky Ronnie saw it on the sideline made the call into Clifford and they audible at the line of scrimmage beautiful well, James Franklin may not want to designate his lead running back but it's pretty clear right now it's Noah Kane looking like State will be 6 and 0 oh as they welcome Michigan. 11 point lead, nearing five minutes to go, and an Iowa team that is having a very tough time on offense. Amir Smith Marset. Snap down at the 13 yard line. I'll go back to the touchdown. I want to show you what Ricky Ronnie saw from the press box. Now he is looking at that linebacker right there, Jamon Col Colbert. And he sees he's too far inside. So I don't know what the play originally was called, but what he is saying is, look, we're going to flip it out to Noah Kane because that linebacker can't beat him to the pylon, especially when he moved inside a step. It was no chance. There were only two defenders outside. And at the end, the lawn boys chain belongs to Noah Kane, who has proven to be the go to back here in the fourth quarter of the last two weeks for Penn State. Five rushing touchdowns prior to tonight, and that was fourth in the country among freshmen. We got another tonight. Nate Stanley throws it up for grabs. Rick Castro Fields almost picked it off. Well, clearly it's Kane tonight. He has 17 carries. The other three who've been splitting the time with him have four each. Yeah, I just think the further this season goes, the more he's going to become. And really, Penn State's had feature guys. It was Saquon, it was Miles Sanders. Now this year they've been playing four, trying to maybe find that guy. I think that's the guy. So you're saying they'll be raising Kane yes. up the depth chart. <laughs> up the depth chart, yeah. Stanley. Oh, Smith Marset chopped down a couple of times here. On the kickoff return now on that catch by Lamont Wade. Iowa trying to go quickly. Well, those 52 yards have come in some key situations to keep the chains moving. That was a few plays ago. Hitting his right hand after he released the football on Robert Windsor's helmet. Kind of holding that right thumb and uh, that's tough when you're trying to grip a football. Might say Windsor has tied them in knots. <laughs> and then again, you might not. Four and a half to go. It's getting to be your bewitching it hour. It's past my bedtime now. Maybe we'll punch it. Stanley. Good throw. And catch by Nate Weeding. 
Out of bounds, first down, out near the 30. Holly? You guys saw Nate Stanley hit his hand on a helmet. He came over during that timeout there and threw some passes. He wanted to make sure that that hand was working properly. He threw about four passes, felt like it was okay, so he trotted back out there instead of Petrus, who had begun to warm up. You know, that last throw was a really good throw, so it must be okay, because he zipped that one in. He has a lot of hand. Oh boy. Help compensate if he does have some soreness. He keeps the hand he has his huge hands. Robert Windsor put pressure on again. Bit of a flutter ball, but it's caught by Brandon Smith out of bounds of another first down at the 43 yard line. So Iowa on the move here. Well, Nate Stanley does a nice job making a play on the move, but I'll tell you what. Robert Windsor is making himself some money tonight. He's a fifth year senior. The coaches said he's been more invested this year, had the best off season of conditioning, and he is a disruptive force on the inside of this defense. Stanley, some time, throws it over the head of Nico Regani. I think when we get the Big Ten press release in a day or two, uh, Robert Windsor's probably going to be the defensive lineman of the week now in the conference. Thinking of the Big Ten, how about Minnesota? There are four undefeated yes. teams starting today. Wisconsin won in uh, shutout fashion again today against Michigan State. Ohio State's off. Here's Penn State. Looks like uh, they're going to win. Minnesota. Right. Everybody thought tonight would be a test of their for real against the uh, fighting Scott Frosts up in Minneapolis. and. Minnesota with a big lead in that game. They're going to remain undefeated. Stanley in a crowd high throw in the general direction of Smith Marset. And uh, again, he's slow to get up. He's taken several hard hits, starting with the kickoff at the beginning of this possession. Garrett Taylor had the coverage, and Smith Marset's going to limp on. Stay tuned for the Ford wrap up right after the game with Cassidy Hubbard. 322 away from that. Last two years, the game went right down to the wire. Can Iowa score here? And give themselves a chance. Running out of time. Another big hit and a flag thrown. Nate Weeding made the catch and held on. He got blasted by Shaka Tony. Flag thrown. You wonder if it was for targeting. Targeting. Defense number 18. That ruling is under further review. Well, let's bring in Dave Kataya again as we take our second look at it. Sean, to me, he lowers his head, hits it with the crown of the helmet. Not only that, this player's defenses, so any contact above the shoulders, forcible contact, is going to be targeted. Now watch here, he drops the helmet into the into the into the uh, receiver's helmet. To me, this is targeting, and I think it's going to it's going. To... Yeah, I think almost on both cases, right, Dave? I mean, he. If he leads with the crown, that's one thing. If it's a defenseless player and he hits in the head and neck area, that's that's also targeting. So I think on both cases, he's yeah. Gone. A defenseless player hit with a hand, arm, forearm, helmet in the head or neck area right. that makes it targeting, forceful contact. Here, I agree with you, Todd. I think you got him both ways. And now, if this holds and if it's a targeting, the bad thing for Penn State is Shaka Tony will be out the first half of the Michigan game next week, which is a huge. Bad break for Penn State's defense. Absolutely correct. One of their best pass rushers. And that's next Saturday night on ABC. I mean, he was by Wells Fargo. He was dropping in coverage. He didn't rush the passer. He makes a nice play peeling back for the tight end, but I think that's going to be a clear targeting call on Shaka Tony. Well, not clear enough, apparently, for Tom Kissinger. Continues to look at it in the replay booth. Now remember with targeting this year there's a rule change. It says it has to be 100% to remove the player. Right. So that, that's part of this. But to me I, I don't see anything that, that changes it. At least It, it seems kind of strange to me that they tell the on the field officials if there's any doubt for targeting throw the flag. 
Then they tell the replay officials if there's any doubt it's not targeting. Yeah that was a rule change because I think it was generated because they didn't want a kid thrown out right. unless they were absolutely certain it was targeting. And I think that's good. I mean I think that should be the the very last case scenario that a kid gets kicked out of the game. And I agree because it's a big deal to kick somebody out of the game so you want to make sure it's confirmed right. in their mind. Yeah but there's no more the call stands when it comes to targeting. No right. you so either got confirmed if, or uh, overturned. If you fit in the category of stance then the, the player's going to stay in the game. After further review there is no foul for targeting. Number 18 may stay in the game. There's a completed pass. It'll be fourth down and five yards at the 49 yard line. Fourth down. Well, Tom Kissinger. The clock will start on the, on the ready for play. From a Penn State standpoint, taketh away the yes. touchdown, and now he giveth yeah. Shaka Tony back to them next week. Well, I'm, I'm happy for the kid, and I'm happy for Penn State's defense because they, they need all their guys for the Wolverines next week, and that, uh, that could have been really costly. Well, you and Dave both explain the various. Yeah. Aspects of targeting that seem to apply here. The video seems to support it. So I don't know what Tom was watching on the touchdown he took back or on that. But I guess if you Penn State, you're, you're even. And you're <laughs> likely to win the game even without the touchdown that took away. Nico Regani ripped down by Lamont Wade before I keep putting this one on the wind call for Penn State. Here comes yeah. Iowa marching down the field, first and ten. Still three minutes to go and three timeouts. And they're continuing on the move. Brandon Smith the catch and a little life in the offense. And now Vitor Gross Matos slow to get up. You can make a play down the field for Nate Stanley. What receiver can make a big play? The good news for Nate Stanley, Robert Windsor's on the sideline right now. The guy who's been terrorizing him on the inside. Good news for Penn State. The other defensive end opposite Gross Matos is still on the field. Shaka Tony. After the targeting was overturned. Stanley's throw too high for Nate Weeding. Third down and one. Stanley now 24 for 42 for 253 yards and an interception. Thing about this Penn State defense that you just see is they are long and they are fast. And they've got a lot of length all over the field. Ooh. Looked like they're trying to quarterback sneak. It looked like there was some movement on the line. It also looked like Stanley lost the ball. Yeah, I think he never cleanly got the snap, but he recovered the football. Past the first down marker. Be going quickly to try this again here. Yeah, he, he got back on it. And he got it for a first down. Not how they drew it up, but it was effective for Iowa. Now Stanley throwing it up for grabs. And it is right. What a catch by Brandon Smith. He went over John Reed and just yanked it away from him. Iowa very much alive with two and a half to go. I just asked the question, who's going to make a play for Nate Stanley? Brandon Smith says, I will. Thank you very much. A state champion high jumper in high school. He jumps over John Reed for the touchdown catch here to keep Iowa very much alive in the ballgame. They're going to go for a very important two-point play. Smith, excellent size, 6'2", 218. Todd mentioned the athleticism. State champion high jumper, the personal best of 6'8". Now a critical two-point play here, trying to make it a three-point game. Give them a chance to tie it if they got the ball back with a field goal. They look like they don't really know what their two-point play is here, though. They, they look confused in how and they're... The play clock is not running. So that's a break for them. They're going to get back in the huddle. I mean, you would think you, you have a two point play that you always work on. We're going to look at the touchdown. And it's anybody's guess how this is going to end up. 
What an incredible effort. You know, and and Iowa took advantage of the fact that Robert Windsor and Yitor Gross Matos were both on the sideline on that play. He had good protection. Did he maintain control of the ball all the way to the ground through the catch? I think he did. I am not going to weigh in on this <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, if it stands, it's one of the plays of the year in college football. Unbelievable effort. I think we'll see it on You Got Moss tomorrow morning as well. Well, Dave Kataya, what are they looking at? If the, the ball's moving around there as he hits the ground? Yeah, they're looking at whether he loses control of the ball. Remember, any, any slight movement's not going to count. It's whether the ball comes off or not. After further review, the ruling on the field of touchdown stands. There's not enough ball movement there to yeah. overturn this. It's close, but I have to agree with that one. So as you mentioned, Sean, very important two-point play. They've had lots of time to talk about it now. You know, typically you have one or two two-point plays you work on in practice on a weekly basis. Let's see what Iowa dials up here. This is now. huge. Well, with three timeouts and two and a half minutes to go, they don't have to onside kick regardless of how this turns out. They're 0 for 1 this year on two-point tracks. Short set, and the ball is intercepted. He was trying to jam it into Nate Weeding, and it wound up being picked off by Tariq Castro Fields. They started Weeding on the other side of the formation. They're just going to try to squeeze one in right here. But Micah Parsons is in good position to make a play on the football. It was tight end against linebacker, and Micah Parsons does a nice job playing through the man to the football. That was beautiful work there. His fourth touchdown catch of the year. They've gone 27 drives against Power 5 competition without a touchdown. As we mentioned a couple of times, their 48 to 3 win against Middle Tennessee State was in the middle of that. That Middle Tennessee State game, they had 644 yards of offense, which was the highest in the Kirk Ferentz era. Well, Penn State anticipating an onside kick. Caleb Shudak kicks it down the field. Fair catch signaled and made by KJ Hamlin. Iowa has all three of their timeouts, too. That also is why Kirk Ferentz decided to kick it deep this time. Noah Kane, he's been the man here in the fourth quarter for Penn State. A hard run up the middle for seven yards. And Iowa will use the first of its three timeouts with 224 to go in Penn State leading by five. The next Saturday night we'll see these Nittany Lions again as they host the Michigan Wolverines. 7.30 Eastern time on ABC. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. Michigan had a strange day today. They were up 28-0 in Illinois. All of a sudden you looked at the Scores again on ESPN and it's 28-25. And they wound up winning 42-25. Schedule gets a lot harder starting tonight here with this game against a ranked opponent. But uh, as you see, they still have Ohio State to take on. It's a tough schedule. Yep. Now the last play, they went Friar move. They just let him run up on the inside. Let's see if they go the same kind of run behind Friar move. Yep, same play. Kane can't break free from the tackles. Big stop of the line of scrimmage by the Iowa defense. Kirk Ferentz uses his second timeout. A.J. Epinesa led the way for the Hawks. And here comes an enormous third down. They squeezed down on this time, and it was Epinesa who came on an inside move, beat the left tackle, Rasheed Walker, to the inside and stopped Noah Kane for a very no gain on that play and the, the biggest third down play of the game. Penn State right now, 
Having a pretty good game on third down. They're nine of 17. The first two weeks of the season, they were atrocious. They were seven for 30 on third downs. The first two weeks really picked it up the last. Well, it really hurt them. They scored 79 I points know. against Idaho and 45 against Buffalo. Right. So they must have been pretty good on first and second down. But they only had seven against Buffalo in the first half. No. Oh, here's a huge play. Third down and three. Kane, the running back on Clifford's hip. Clifford's been a big runner in these situations. Kane bouncing forward for the first down. What a tough run. He made him all the way to the 40. He ran right behind Steven Gonzalez, number 74, the left guard. And then just again, he runs so hard and he pushes the pile. Gonzalez with the block, 74, and then just hard nose running by the true freshman, Noah Kane. Might say Kane was able to stay on his feet <laughs> oh, and get the first down. Noah Kane up to 97 yards rushing on 20 carries, just under five per carry. We think either he or Clifford will get the ball here. He's down at the 42. Iowa can't stop it. Kid does not carry himself like a freshman, you know? I mean, he looks like a very mature young guy protecting the football. I mean, he uh, he's the real deal. Over 100 yards for the second week in a row. And his first career 100 yard game last week, 105 on just 12 carries. And they win over Purdue and 102 tonight. Clifford will take it down as far as he can. You know, Sean, this is this is really an important, not only an important win against a ranked opponent on the road for Penn State, but an important kind of win. You know, they beat Maryland 59 to nothing. They blew out Purdue. They just had their way with everybody. They had a tight game against Pitt, 17 to 10. But to come on the road and to gut one out and to win a gritty kind of game like this, uh, th this does a lot for your football team. This is a huge confidence builder in terms of how tough your football team is. It's a good Iowa team and a very tough place to play. James Franklin is about to get his first win at Penn State. Actually, his first one ever. We saw he didn't win uh, on the road against the top 25 when he was at Vanderbilt doing a great job in the time that he was there for three seasons in Nashville. But he'll get to one and six at Penn State on the road against a ranked team. Well, it'll be 12 straight wins for Penn State against the Big Ten West. You know, I we, we kind of talked about this during the week. I really think personnel wise, when you look at them athletically, they are the closest team to Ohio State in the Big Ten. Everybody says Ohio State's the team to beat and they've played that way. Wisconsin's undefeated, got their fourth shutout. But I think athletically, this is the team that matches up with yeah. Ohio State. From a speed standpoint. Right, speed yes. and athleticism, yeah. Well, with Tom Jackson out again this week, and we wish him well, Ryan Clark will join Chris Berman again for NFL primetime. It's tomorrow night, 7.30, exclusively on ESPN Plus, with the highlights and breakdowns from all of tomorrow's NFL games. Clifford kind of awkwardly goes down on the knee. And they do not have to snap it again. Clifford held to 117 yards passing, but he made some big plays with his feet. And Windsor was enormous on defense. Kane took over in the fourth quarter. And now Stanley and the Hawkeyes have lost two in a row. Penn State goes to six and oh, they'll move up some more. Started the preseason at 15. They were number 10 entering today. And they'll likely move up in the next poll.